I would argue, offensive. Um, I call Dan Bidwa. Mr Speaker, it's a pleasure to bring this debate back to the House today, uh, back to reality, and to oppose with vigour the third reading of the Employment Relations Amendment Bill. I oppose this bill, Madam, uh, Mr Speaker, because this is a bad bill. It's a bill that is all about the unions. It's very little about the workers, in fact, Mr Speaker. It's going to cost the economy. It's going to cost small business, large business. It's going to cost opportunities uh, for our young and for people who want to get ahead. And, Mr Speaker, it's also pitting employers against employees, taking us back to the 1970s, a period where it was about us and them. And so that is why, Mr Speaker, we oppose the Employment Relations yep. Amendment Bill. We have, Mr Speaker, one of the best and most efficient labour markets in the developed world. With the, we have the six best uh, relations between labour and employment relations, according to the World Economic Forum. We have a labour market that's producing great results, and great results that this government's trumpeting. 3.9 per cent unemployment, record high labour force participation rates. Now, does that, does that say that we need to change this labour market? Absolutely not, Mr Speaker. And the principles of our efficient, effective, world-class labour market, Mr Speaker, are very clear. It's about good faith, and it's about mutual respect between the employer and the employees. And, Mr Speaker, most employers are good employers in New Zealand. They take care of their workers, they pay them well, they, they are flexible with their working arrangements. And that is what we heard, Mr Speaker, in the submissions that were submitted from business community. But also, that's what we heard from this side of the House yesterday in committee stage. And I'm very proud to see the colleagues that I have, many of which who have been employers, who have been in a position to offer people an opportunity to get ahead, to make them better off, and to give them the flexibility that they want, Mr Speaker. So we, on this side of the House, are very clear that it's about the mutual respect between employers and employees. And I just think, Mr Speaker, we need to stop bashing businesses as this evil group in society that just wants to pin down the workers, that wants to extract as much value, because that, Mr Speaker, is a shame for the whole business community in New Zealand. And a lot of people, including my own parents, they're hard-working small business owners. My dad's a truck driver, and my mum owns a small sales business. And that is disrespectful uh, to them who are paying their work as well and want to get ahead for that. Yep. And that is why, Mr Speaker, union membership is at an all-time low. Despite what they're saying, if you look at the long-run trend of union membership from 1991, to 2017, we see that union membership has declined from 34% of the workforce down to, guess what, 17%. And this bill, ref and, the, and that trend, Mr Speaker, reflects the global trend. Unions across the world are declining. And the real fact, Mr Speaker, that this government doesn't want to acknowledge is that there is no relationship at all between union power and the level of economic development in a country. The level of economic prosperity in a country. And an alternative, and I want to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge the Minister, uh, Andrew Little, because he did raise a really good intellectual point about today's modern challenge. And I want to propose an alternative to what he proposed and to the modern challenge. The modern challenge that we face today as a country, and we do face some serious challenges with respect to our workforce, is to empower our workers, is to upskill their workforce so that they can get their fair share. And it's to uh, work in partnership between employers and employees 
uh, in order to make sure we're all better off. That is, I think, today, Mr Speaker, the modern challenge, and that is how we on this side of the House would be um, addressing that challenge. Now, I just want to go into some of the specifics today about uh, this bill and why we are opposing it. So I want to talk about the changes that are on the way for small and large businesses and the impacts that this is going to have on our economy. First, on the 90-day trials, what we're going to see is fewer opportunities uh, to take on uh, workers in the business world. We've got next, we've got unfettered access to the workplace for, let me explain this, for work, work, workforces and, and employers where there is a collective agreement or where they are bargaining for a collective agreement. That is going to again pin the employer against the employee um, and it's going to create a hostile environment. And that's not the type of environment that we want on to see on this side of the House. A third, Mr Speaker, is around the paid time off for union workers. Now, this is just going to add on extra cost to business because guess what? This all flows through to lost productivity in the workforce. So that is going to add on extra cost to business. Um, and even though it's reasonable as it's defined in the bill, that's still very vague, uh, Mr Speaker. And what we're going to find is uh, far more high cost to, to business. We've got another provision in the bill around the duty to conclude uh, the multi-employer multi collective agreement. And yes, you know, there's been a small win from the, uh, from the New Zealand First Party that you can get out of these meccas based on reasonable grounds. But what we raised here today and in yesterday in the speeches, Mr Speaker, is that that is still far too loose and vague of a definition. What is these meccas going to actually mean for the hard-working businesses of New Zealand? It's just going to add on more cost. It's going to make sure that it takes choices away from business, uh, businesses and away from employer, employees. And not, let, not talk about uh, commercial sensitivity. We haven't actually talked about that much in the House, uh, that um, employees in the same sector are going to be uh, exposed uh, from commercially, commercially sensitive information. Continuing on to the uh, other points, we've got rest and meal breaks, which we've debated quite heavily in this um, House in the last few days. Now, no one um, wants a case, Mr Speaker, where we're not having rest and meal breaks in the workplace. What we're calling for is a degree of flexibility, and it's that flexibility that is going to create a, a thriving, dynamic and productive economy. And finally, Mr. Speaker, on the uh, reinstatement for primary, uh, the, the, as the primary remedy for any disputes. And we've talked about this very loud and clear. That are, there are many cases where reinstatement is just not um, acceptable. The workplace relationship has broken down, and we think that there needs to be much more flexibility uh, on the table for that. So here, that is in a nutshell some of the changes that are on um, the way to New Zealand businesses. And now New Zealand First will sit here and they'll say, well, yes, we've, got some extra we've extracted some value from this bill. And I saw Mr Clayton Mitchell debate in the House today. I don't think he's even read the bill, Mr Speaker. It was an appalling speech. He barely spent any time in the House today talking about the, uh, the bill that's before the House. So... Quite frankly, Mr Speaker, New Zealand First got diddly squat out of their negotiations with this employment bill, uh, and it's really taking us back. We've heard the Minister talk about it's taking us back to the 50s. We've heard another one talk about it's taking us back to the 60s and 70s. Mr Speaker, I want to talk about the 2050s and the type of New Zealand that we want to live in in the 2050s, where our employment relationship is a flexible relationship, where it's worker-centric, not union-centric, and where it's about a partnership between private enterprise and employers and, of course, um, employees. And that is, Mr Speaker, the type of uh, vision that we have in the National Party for the future of employment relations. And I cannot wait until the day that we get back into office and we are going to repeal this law 
by um, to, to fro and uh, work to that vision. So, Mr. Speaker, we will oppose this bill with much rigour in the House. Thank you. Um, I call the Honourable Willie Jackson. Oh, Mr. Five Speaker, uh, after that.